for their reporters. How are they investigating? Will we have to do investigation? Well, what other investigations took place? In other words, the procedures and the way the investigations have been carried out, rather than us acting as second guessing that we weren't there at the time, we weren't there when the conversations took place, when there were discrepancies between who said what. I have to tell you that doing that, and given what the uh, success of the two schemes were, I am a bit baffled by several remarks and innuendos and language used uh, in this matter. Um, I, I, I thought at one time, and I'm sure the Chief Executive will confirm, that he would put my notes in the book preparing the statement, because I looked at the procedures of the Fed as to what my role should be on this committee in this matter. We had an internal role in the report. It wasn't a lengthy one, uh, and that picked up when we asked Mr. Timmons to look into the matter, and in his view, it was right to see another thing, and that was done. And what we did was we turned, uh, after his view, uh, to uh, Grant Thornton. Um, Grant Thornton was our payment to make sure that the staff dealing with it were not the same staff as the board of the other council and the other ones was where in fact truly independent of any other the quality. And what I can't find in Grant Thornton's report, either in the summary or in the fifty or forty pages of the findings, is anything that there is any criticism of the staff in the office. Obviously there is a difference of opinion between uh, the claims uh, and the end of the I say we don't regard anybody as a prosecutor in this matter, or as a defendant. We're here to determine whether the right certain uh, answer has been provided to, to this in their matter. I looked at um, the independent DVD uh, uh, investigation, and I looked at the fact that there was a reference to the key. Because, let me tell you, I call the impression, the overall impression that was that the, this is the investment grant side, and um, I think it's been fully answered, in my view. Uh, it, it offers this feeling that there's still lessons to learn from it, and, uh, and, and how it might, it might be improved in future, that's all well and good. But when we come to the crisis, it's rather different, because it's quite clear that uh, the councils uh, have misgivings and uh, I, when I spoke to the uh, head of legal services, I, I said that I wasn't happy with that. Uh, and he explained the procedure of the, uh, the department's uh, uh, auditors who actually handled the examination of the uh, invoices and giving the support and documentation. I went through that procedure and I see it was concluded uh, and got a real page uh, uh, of a
least you imply that we are satisfied um, that um, their honesty and integrity has not been impugned. Then we ought to be satisfied with the um, uh, with the reports of the end. I find that a slightly hard, uh, high, high bar um, uh, to rear. I don't mean that I'm impugning the honesty and integrity of the audiences. I am not. If anybody asks me, is there a conspiracy here? I would have to say, no, there isn't. What there is, however, is, uh, in, in my view, various parts of the reports uh, which are the moment. Uh, an issue of process. Officers are individuals that operate within a bureaucracy. By its nature, the council is a bureaucracy. People do what they think is right at the right moment and uh, refer things to various other officers. No doubt in my mind that at various points in the uh, in the system, those processes have broken down, have broken down quite quite badly. Well. And I think we're all aware of that. We've had reports here from Mr. Uh, that effectively said to us, you know, that uh, the return the internal work was far from the trouble and there's nothing for the purpose and, and where it's been done uh, to uh, 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 to correct that. We've had reports from the chief executive that we said the same thing about the senior management structure that was in place within the council uh, and the action that he's taken to do it. So the test for me isn't whether officers have acted with honesty and integrity. <coughs> I would say I would agree with that's fine within within uh, within those definitions. The test for me has been has the processes of the council now have place uh, in place uh, where satisfaction. And I think as John uh, touched on same with regard to the uh, to the ISIS, the ISIS reports, um, ground forms have raised to our attention concerns. And, and I think it's difficult, you can't turn away from those, those are there. But just really saying to this committee on this issue, since the Chief Executive to, uh, to the Chief Executive, that I think there are the were issues with the one in ISIS is in no way to impugn our civil integrity. It is just to say, the processes that were in place at that time clearly didn't work. And I don't want to uh, sit here and say um, that, uh, that, that I'm entirely satisfied um, that the report that Grant Thornton have done for us uh, completely exonerates the council in terms of its failure of process. Um, a couple of examples, um, if, if I can, because uh, I'm possibly being slightly more critical than, uh, than John was, but it's, I think it's important to, uh, to, to lay that. On page 459, uh, in terms of the big contract, uh, Grant Thornton tell us that the big contract was never signed. Now, we've had that issue before us. We've had that issue before us, not just in, in terms of uh, this contract, other contracts uh, uh, suffered the same breakdown in process. There's no conspiracy necessarily, even though it's deliberately uh, required uh, uh, to sign the contract. It happened. It was part of the problems that the council then uh, faced. In terms of the ISIS contract documentation, on page 63, uh, Grant Thornton uh, advised us that they've been unable to locate a full set of contractual documents related to ISIS. These are, I, mean, I, I, I don't know, if, did, did you want to pause at some point? Because I, I know I'm, I'm throwing questions onto the table that I've pulled out of the documentation. I don't know whether officers want to be more the or not. Um, these are clearly failings of process, not failings of uh, necessarily honesty uh, and integrity. The only thing that concerns me possibly slightly more is that Grant Thornton do refer on page 105 to a possible waste of public money. And that's not just simply around um, the time that they're taking in charge for us at the time that officers are taken. Um, as soon as uh, a member of the audit risk committee sheet of my member suggests there might be waste of public money, I think it's time that our leaders picked up and asked uh, about that. That's nothing to do with officer integrity, but it certainly is to do with the oversight that this committee should be given um, to, uh, to audits um, of this nature. I was also intrigued, and I do hope officers could come back on this uh, issue. During the course of their uh, uh, interviews and, and review, um, it came apart. Now, thoughts of the report was on page 111, paragraph 4.87, that, um, that uh, the Department of Risk and Health and Human Health had asked uh, legal services for advice in terms of terminating the contract. 
there must have been concerns. I'm not entirely sure what the nature of the concerns were at that point, but Norton seemed to suggest um, that that was to do with the fact that um, the work uh, that was being done would, would, in any case, fall to our level staff or would not be done to a high enough standard. That's about contract monitoring, isn't it? And I think a fair point was made that, you know, in due course, a lot of this work will be, will, will, will be done by external agencies and we're not in a position to enforce contractual obligations. Uh, and our processes aren't robust enough to enforce contractual obligations. Then we have a problem with the required oil, uh, uh, do we not? Um, the, the, the reports, uh, the two executive's recommendations just simply ask us to, to note a, a number of things. However, the Glenn Thornton report makes some specific recommendations uh, to us, particularly with regards to access. Um, on page 72, they ask us uh, about the possible referral to the Information Commissioner. They ask about our referral to the um, Solicitor's Regulation Body on one of those matters. And they also ask us on page Sorry, it's either 160 or 94, it's one of the two. But ask us whether we should consider civil action to recover losses in care under section 222 of the local government act of 1972. That's in regard to, uh, to, uh, to licenses on page 72. Uh, they are specific recommendations, and I'm not entirely sure that the chief executive uh, recommends to us in his quarter of the report that we know the fact whether he's asking us to, uh, or whether he's telling us he's going to do these things because they arise from issues that Grant Thornton have, have found, particularly in the ISIS country, or whether he's saying, trust me, uh, I know what I'm doing, but trust me, I know what I'm doing, and I'd, I'd quite like, like to know um, specifically what the, uh, what the answer uh, to that is. Uh, I think in, in terms of the frustration of the, uh, of the whistleblowers, I think their anger is understandable. Um, and I think it would have been a relief, I think, to Mr. Hodrell and others, um, particularly with regard to uh, the uh, internet work reports, and uh, to hear that the Chief Executive agrees uh, with the, uh, the opinion of Mr. Timmons' uh, overview uh, that they were not fit for purpose. And this, this has got to be, you know, this is part of a, of a process, isn't it? was cleansing by fire, isn't it? We've got to accept that the council at that point was not fit for purpose, was not fit for purpose in terms of the, uh, the way that it was dealing with uh, the suppliers of this nature and the uh, processes that were then in place. Um, just that, that is, I have to say, the two executive officers that were there at the time. Because I was a councillor that was there and for, a lot, uh, for, for a period of that time, sat in the council as executive body. Uh, as a government, now I am a lowly of life and the words So I am, I am as angry as other chief officers may be are when they see my thoughts and their criticisms of process, and that is then turned into potentially criticisms of policy and integrity by others. But the frustrations of the whistleblowers must have felt, you know, I can understand it. necessarily as I'm not just sorry saying, oh, you know, we must have a forgiven for guests, uh, that sort of thing. But I can understand how the process has let them down in the past. Um, and, and I do hope that, uh, that the chief executive, at least, I mean, uh, opinion, if you like, uh, Mr. Gary's initial report has not been the facts and the steps that have been taken. Um, we'll have to sort source however many years uh, have had uh, that. Now, I'm going to there are issues. Do you think they should be addressed? Whether they're addressed here, or they're addressed at a later date when we get the, uh, the outcome of the uh, this uh, report, because they might have uh, opinions and recommendations of their own to make. It, it isn't finished in that to that extent, but, um, but, but, but there, there is your chair, my comments, um, and I'm, I'm just see the Chief Executive is keen to, uh, to come back to it. <laughs> Chair, if I respond to uh, a couple of points that I made, I think if I can also come in and also the, the, the points of detail as well. First of all, can I uh, first of all, thank Councillor Hales for his uh, comments and I, I agree to the extent that no member of this committee, indeed like myself, uh, I cannot go through all 930 grants and payments made and set a check out of what I can't do that. What I can say is 
the view of this committee, I believe, anyway, is to ensure the adequate checks and balances and processes and independent assessments are in place. And what I've tried to demonstrate is by a lot of bond of Grant Thornton, A3, police, DCLG, that as officers we have put those checks and balances in place. So I think in that sense, hopefully, you know, the police will be satisfied that yeah, that we have to put those checks and balances in place, particularly also coming here with every document in the world to do this report to make sure everyone can see uh, what we're doing. I think Councillor Kelly's right, and maybe I did uh, um, dwell a bit much on the honesty and integrity of officers, but for me it's a reflection of the fact that the number of emails you and I have been receiving over the last two years, and the social media, and the uh, very damaging statements about officers who have the highest regard for. So I think that's why I responded in that way. I think I've admitted uh, that uh, this process was not perfect. But I would say, from my experience in Blackburn and anywhere else, running similar schemes such as this, I think if many councils in the country have been examined to this sort of scrutiny, in this sort of detail, of 900 and odd firms and several, several jobs, I expect similar flaws in some of the processes may have been found. And I think that doesn't make them correct, that doesn't mean we don't need to address them, doesn't mean we need to, need to improve, but nevertheless, I think this council uh, does own up that some of the things that were wrong weren't done perfectly, but were they fundamental? That's the point. Were they fundamental or were they things that need to be put right? I think the things that need to be put right and lessons learned, and I assure you lessons are being learned. And I think hopefully, um, You'll be reassured. I know you had uh, reports from Mark at your last meeting regarding the annual government statement and the value for money statements from the external auditor. And I know you were pleased, and I was delighted to see the massive improvement in the council's governance and standards that were reported to you over the past two years. So I think you can be satisfied that no council is ever going to be perfect. But it's a matter of how you address those concerns that's important. And I think what we've proven today, by bringing this report to you in full, that we're determined to address those concerns. And the work done independently by Grant Thornton, or as you say, by a different set of officers, uh, have actually showed some of the progress this council has made over the last two years. So I'll also assure you that when the um, report is received from this, and this their report, not my report, so I can't say when that happens. Well, it does happen, it will be reported. And also, I will give uh, full detail of both that report and any actions learned from it, and also give full detail of the uh, Grant Thornton recommendations that Councillor Kelly has highlighted, a number of which have already been put in train. We didn't wait for this committee, we've done most of those uh, things. But I'll give a written report to that to the next meeting by each of those items, if that's okay with you. I think Kevin may want to add some more greater detail, which I can't, uh, I can't ask myself.
presented to us, and, uh, and Mr. Holbrook and his, and his uh, colleagues. Uh, I understand and accept the frustrations um, that they have voiced to us tonight. I'm uh, grateful for perhaps some of the examples they've given to us. Uh, my own view is that public bodies in Quangos are notoriously inefficient in making funding available to the end user. And tonight we've seen some examples of that in the reports that we have in front of us. One of them is evident in, uh, in page 393. Um, my interpretation of that, and I may be wrong, is that it costs £220,000 uh, to allocate £175,000 to end users. I'm not sure I've interpreted that correctly. I'm happy to be corrected if I'm wrong. However, so I accept the fact that public bodies are inefficient in distribution of funds. It's, it's part of living in a transparent um, and democratic society where we are accountable and the very fact that we're here tonight is evidence of the fact that we're accountable and transparent and open so I accept the fact that public bodies can sometimes be inefficient however I, I also accept that the officers who were responsible for the administration of the funds were diligent in carrying out their duty and a clear evidence of that is the fact that you know a, a transparent and open tender exercise was, was carried out and the lowest tender was awarded for the contracts uh, that we've looked at here. I do personally, I, I personally don't think it's the place of, of, of um, public officers and bodies to advise small startup enterprises on how to run a business. That's a personal view. I don't personally see how somebody who's worked in public service for 30 or 40 years is in a position to advise someone how to open up a sweet shop. I think it's a difficult thing that we ask our officers to do to administer public funds, I really do. However, I see no evidence whatsoever of the fact that our officers have not acted with, with integrity and honesty in the administration of their duties. Uh, I know that a lot of the things that we've read about tonight are historical. I accept the fact that perhaps some inefficiencies took place. I do, do not believe that our officers, and particularly the officers we have with us tonight, have acted in any way other than with complete openness and transparency and integrity. And I personally am satisfied to support the recommendations uh, that, that we have in front of us. Any more comments? Sure. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, <laughs> to press, press it to you. Is it possibly on, on, on this issue. 
when, when one reads the, um, the, the, the Bob Norton report on, uh, on, on enterprise solution, solutions, um, I have to say that it strikes me that they don't put themselves in the world as an organization. Uh, it, it appears that they, they, they have incorporated, despite it being a conceptual obligation, for them to incorporate. Um, and, and in a sense, whilst a lot of the fire, if you like, seems to have been directed to the council's offices, it's, it's my reading of it that actually you know, the private sector has, um, has let us down. Now, maybe we should have managed it as an authority better, but let's try solutions. Uh, clearly, um, a lot of the areas where I've started have behaved poorly. Uh, and, and I think that's, uh, I hope the council will agree that that appears to be their interpretation um, of the way they've cooperated with the investigation. I'll come back to it, what's the press on this? Uh, on page 160, of their government report, we are asked specifically about recovery costs that might have been lost to the authority um, because of the, uh, the way I suppose solutions uh, as the government in the future. Asked to consider things. Now, I don't know whether that has already been considered. I listened carefully to the Chief Executive's response to my earlier question whether um, those considerations will come out as part of um, a future report where the whole thing in the round is in front of us, because I appreciate that some recommendations, such as referrals and police, were taken, uh, taken immediately. But others, like the attempted civil uh, uh, litigation, I also understand, incidentally, uh, given the answer that we received on whether we could terminate the contract or not, that there might be reluctance uh, because of the, uh, the chance of success uh, from the uh, legal department. Um, but sometimes, you know, maybe the authority has got to stand up, take a chance and say, if, if, if people start wasting public money, we are going to try and get it back. We are going to try and get it back. As a, as a market to other uh, private sector companies and the whole concept of the this council, for whatever reason, the uh, external audit thinks that we should consider this. Are we considering this? And are we taking external legal advice as a chance of success? Because of the nature of the question and the nature of legal advice, I think I probably need to uh, bring a separate note on that matter rather than uh, dealing with this in uh, a public session. Clearly, you need to look carefully at the advice you're given legally and the strength of your case or not. And, uh,